So I'm Fabio Bonanno. I run a business, Fabio Bonanno Coaching is the umbrella business, but I've got a health and performance coaching blueprint. I help busy men really just figure out their health. So maximize their health so that they can really understand what that looks like for them. And that's different for everyone as well as understanding their mindset so they can show up as better dads, better husbands, better businessmen. And they can use that unselfish act of looking after themselves to help self serve other people in their life. Awesome. So now everyone joining us here on Dad Space, you're like, that's not Dave talking. No, no, that's Fabio. And he sounds amazing for me because I'm in Canada and we don't have accents in Canada. But it's so nice to hear your voice. Nice to connect with you. Welcome to Dad Space. Glad to have you here. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be exciting. I love kind of the dad, the dad movement, whatever that looks like for everyone, which is what makes it exciting is that we're all connected by being dads, but that looks different for everyone, you know? Right. So good to have you on. And the people listening, they're like, wow, I love this gentleman's accent. I love everything about him. Can you tell everybody where you're located in this great big world? So, I mean, currently located in London. So you could have given me, with me giving you the backstory of... Oh, oh yes, please. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll try and give you a shorter version as possible, but... Um, with the with the accent, it doesn't match the name, so people expect an accent. But I was born and raised in in Scotland, Glasgow, Scotland, in the UK. Yes. French mum, Italian dad, so got like a super deep culture of kind of the Mediterranean culture. Spent summers in France and Sicily, and just grew up in that kind of that household of big family and things like that. So summer was just very very busy, amazing. So very gifted, and then just grew up, uh, played basketball, grew up. And I found that sport after trying so many. That was like 11 years. I loved it. And physical output and physicality for me just gave me so much more. And at the time, I thought it was the physical. Now, in hindsight, it's all about the mental and what it gave me back and giving me that stability. Just ticked many boxes as a dad and, well, a dad now, but as a man, as a young man growing up, that you need challenge, you need struggle, you need a group of people. So, your dad space podcast is amazing because you need people struggling with the same thing with the same goal and the same mission mm -hmm. so for me i found that in basketball i left school so in high school you can do six years in scotland i've just done the five um just wanted to get out of there i was just pretty lazy as a kid so i joke i'm the laziest fit man so while i exercise pretty <laughs> intensely outside of that i can do the opposite pretty intensely and sit about and do not much and eat a lot of food yeah. So got out, worked in a car wash for four to six months, then got an apprenticeship as an engineer in a private hospital. So mainly maintenance, but we done everything. Was there eight years, kind of five, six years into that. I studied, I stopped enjoying it. I found it was ticking the boxes. I was an apprentice. The very first apprentice was there, was about 45. He was still there. And I just seen a picture of a life that I didn't want to have. Mm -hmm. So fitness for me, I gave up basketball 23. I just didn't, I had knee operations and stuff. Fitness for me was always an anchor to keep me steady and sane. So I got qualified as a personal trainer. So that was an hour drive to Edinburgh. I'd done that part-time and then sat on that for six months. I done a pretty cool thing on TV. So I don't know if I'll, don't know if I'll go into detail there, but mm -hmm. kind of TV dating show thing for fun, just because I was 24, 25 and really didn't care. It was just up for a laugh. That gave me an insight into what's possible. So after sitting on a personal training qualification for six months, I decided to go to London. So French Italian parents, they say, don't go to London, go part time in Glasgow. Then you can see if it works. I was like, no, they said, OK, go full time Glasgow, then go London. Plan B and C took away from plan A. I want to go to London. It offered opportunities, growth. Um, for me personally, like I personally felt that my, I mean, Glasgow is not small. Depends what you're comparing it to. But mm. compared to some states in Canada, I'm sure it'd be tiny. Um, but it, for me, I felt like I outgrew it. It didn't support who I wanted to be. So went to London. Really no idea what was doing down there um, as a 25 year old boy, basically. So started bodybuilding. That was kind of an anchor for me physically. Started a new personal training career after eight years of an engineering career. And then that evolved, worked in one of London's top 10 gyms, one of the UK's top 10 gyms. And then I jumped about for a little bit and I've been coaching now for 11 years. And 
this is meant to be the short version, but I'll kind of finish up now. So personal training, I found was almost like rent a friend. So people are showing up to personal training sessions. We're doing physical stuff, try to talk about nutrition, try to talk about mindset, but nothing really stuck in that gym environment. So I zoomed out, spent tens of thousands on education and um, I'm now like a, a behavior change coach, which is more on the world world of life coaching. So help men with understanding themselves so that they can show up just to be better, better versions of themselves. And ultimately I'm walking the same path with them. I'm just further ahead. So yeah. that was meant to be the short version. Hopefully that wasn't too mm-hmm. long for the listeners. The perfect guest for dad space. And I'm so happy that you have time to be on the show and talk about this. My family roots at Campbell. It goes back to Scotland as well. So I, I love I love getting a little bit of history there as well. That's really amazing for me. Never been, um, but I can trace my roots back. And I would love to kind of walk where my ancestors walked. And that would be, that'd be a joy for me to see. Yeah, I think there's a big part of just seeing the world, isn't it? It's just like it's just part that part of growth, right? You can yeah. do a lot of challenging stuff in your own hometown and stuff like that, but really like your eyes are open to potential when when you see what's out there, right? And traveling helps with that. And that's not even just the physical environment of traveling to like your heritage, as you said, but even yeah. just conversations. You speak to so many different guys on this podcast, like you're traveling through them almost. True. And that's why I love having conversations like this because everyone's got a different insight. They're just a mash of all their experience and the people they've connected with, the books they've read, the experiences they've had. And that's what makes life great if you have that perspective, I think. And this is one thing I've been kind of wrestling with with some of my guests, Abby, is that some people are, some guys are, they're, they're surrounded by friends, they're surrounded by family, their children, their partners, and work. But there's also this kind of this loneliness that kind of eats away at men from time to time where they don't know how to reach out to 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 guys and and build community on a more meaningful level. You talked about at the gym, right? You can only go to a certain level in a connection level, and then it's that's it. Yeah. Where you wanted to go yeah. further. I think there's a lot of men that just wrestle with how do I connect with other people in a way that's more sustainable than just Sports, movies, music, cars, all the surface yeah. stuff, right? How do we get to another level as guys? So, and that's what I love about you and all your social media posts. I love, I really love kind of following the journey because you're kind of addressing those things in different ways and bringing these issues out and, and sharing it. So for those who aren't following you yet, make sure you check show notes. We'll have all the information there, but tell me a little bit about your social media reach and what you're trying to do through social media to help men so i'm learning a lot about myself and my business and how to speak to people dad's businessmen so i specifically work with with investors and that's men as well um i don't not work with women i just don't like talking to everyone because like you said a lot of men don't know how to reach out on a deeper level. So if I speak to everyone, they're just going to miss a message because it doesn't hit home with them. So I try and specifically speak to these men that they have validation. I mean, a lot of the guys I work with, they, they, they make a lot of money. So they've got validation from big bank accounts, right? And they might need that subconsciously or superficially sorry is the word i'm trying to look for because they never got it from their dad that unconditional love so they have to find validation elsewhere so for me when i'm trying to have a message like and there's there's a balance right because these guys are alpha personality types and emotions get them killed in the investment world so you make an emotional decision on an investment you can lose a lot of money so these guys let's go zoom back zoom out 70 years when we've got wars going on emotions also got you killed back then so the men I work with, their dads didn't have those tools to give them to understand who they are, how they feel and stuff like that. So mm. it was always conditional love because they had to show up as men that fitted the mold that their dad wanted to be. And if they didn't, then they would rebel in certain ways, drink drugs or just even just leave the house because they felt that who they were wasn't good enough. So indirectly, I'm trying to speak to those men who need help. They're also vulnerable. But they can't show that because they have haven't really addressed it a lot of the time. And 
they feel super uncomfortable and super awkward. So I try and like understand the pain that they're in. Like one, because a lot of the time I've been there before, I think most men have, whether they're honest with themselves or not can be the challenge. So I just try and give them an opportunity that I understand them. And if they think that under, I understand them, they might listen to what I've got to say because social media is noisy. Yeah. And you've seen my social media because we're chatting today, but in a week or two, like I'll, I might be a ghost on your social media and mm. someone else might come up. Yeah. But I think like with the message, I try and at least just, I mean, we were just speaking before the podcast started. It's like, it shouldn't be a thing and should comes with judgment, right? I, I don't mean to say that, but being authentic shouldn't be a decision that we need to make. We should just all be authentic. But when we zoom back out and go back 20 years for some men, them being authentic wasn't loved by their mum or dad, right? I'm just saying mm -hmm. my dad because that's the issues that I've personally battled with and we've had conversations yeah. and stuff. But what what tools did my dad have? His dad grew up in a war with eight or nine kids. Like when I asked my dad, like when I was struggling with some emotional things that he might have or might not have given me, he says, what do you want me to do? And he was just, that was like a retaliation question, but it was like a super powerful question because I was like, I don't actually know. Because unless you like want to give me that unconditional love, like then you're, I can't want you or make you do anything. So I think with like the men I'm speaking to is just, you have to firstly understand who you are, your needs. And then look, just almost be stoic. It's like, if somebody doesn't give you them, you can't make them be someone you're not. And you right. might have to leave that person. Not physically, you just might have to spend less time with them physically and give them less power emotionally. Because you could be, messed up for your whole life try to chase acceptance from someone that might not be able to give you it because they're in a, a bad place because they haven't been given the tools to to work through their their weaknesses you know they'll mask it like i said with maybe a good body maybe a big bank account yeah maybe the house the car you know all of these things so i tend to go off on tangents i don't mean to no. sometimes but just some come up there so so you're a dad go back to when you found out the news that you were going to become a father and now you have, now you're realizing that you are going beyond just talking to men and helping people, but you're going to be a father yourself and be an example in your own home. What kind of lessons did you have to learn right off the bat or relearn about yourself when you found out you're going to become a dad? Oh, I'm still learning. Yeah. Like my boy's up, he's three years, nine months. So it's, it's just a, a constant process, but the initial shock, I think, like <laughs> you get about eight or nine months to sort it all out, don't you? When you when you hear that something's happening, you're like, oh, some might be a bit less lucky with six or seven, but yeah, you get enough time to come to terms with the fact that your reality is going to change. And um, for me, it's just like a fright, really, because I've always been like internally motivated, and that might just be because I feel like that the only thing I could count on was myself if I got hurt. So I'd always just kind of. Um, retreat back to something I could control the gym like when I'm in the gym I'm working out it doesn't matter who says what I'm feeling good I'm feeling good it's all good yeah. but like when I came to the terms that I was going to be a dad it's like okay now I have to like I didn't have answers straight away but I started asking questions right how do I feel as a kid and obviously we're I'm 36 now right so I'm still my dad's son well, yeah. I'm not a kid anymore, but you still mm. look for that. You still look for a father figure, a leader, right? I think yeah. men, dads specifically, like, we all need a positive real male role model. And it doesn't have to be your father. Ideally, it would be. But we need to try and find that. And the real troubled ones just don't have that grown up. And it's just a shame. And that's why they end up with a lot more trauma than you have to have. So for me, I, well, firstly, I was scared, to be honest, because mm. I don't know if I was man enough to be a dad. But then, like, obviously conversations like me and my, my partner were, were engaged. Our communications got better, and that has to be important because right. if you're vulnerable and you've got certain responses and reactions to conversations or, or sometimes the opposite of that, you don't respond, you don't react, you just shut off, that creates turmoil and, like, they don't understand why you're feeling like that, but you can go through therapy and just understand yourself more, and then they can understand better. So... For me as a dad, 
we spoke, I was like, I'm scared. And she's like, of course, everyone's scared their first kids, right? Yeah. It's a normal thing. But then when you go like, okay, hold on. I turned it okay. Billions of people have been born before me and most of them are all right. Yeah. I think we might be okay. <laughs> and we're good people. We're in the personal development world. My partner, she's she works in the, the fitness world. She's a coach and yeah. teaches classes and stuff. So she can, like, she doesn't take it as, I would say I'm, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, obsessive a little bit so i can go all in on a lot of things so but she accepts me with my obsessiveness right and when i found out i was going to be a dad it's just that initial fear but then it's like, okay and then i started reading all the books and it doesn't matter how many books you read you're not ready no right yeah <laughs> you're not ready to be a dad um i always liken it just because like i like metaphors and things like you can read everything you want about running a marathon the pain you can hear the stories hitting the wall energy systems fuel but until you run that marathon i don't know if you've run one no no i haven't no no <laughs> be a good idea probably yeah. not to but uh, until you do it like you nothing beats the visceral experience of life so having that kid and we done like we tried to do hypnobirthing we went down the natural route and we had to fight she, our boy was actually 19 days overdue and wow the nurses obviously really felt, fought that. So we wanted a natural birth in the birthing center. Then it had to be like medically induced. And then she had to get like a little episiotomy, but yeah. everything, no gas, no air. And like, I wanted to be involved in that because that was my first step as a father was supporting the mother. Right. And I like, that's the only way I could kind of show support was just try and be strong for her. So like yeah. support her when our boy was born, naturally, like, I think I cried three times during the birth. Like it was like I didn't even mean it. It just came out as just as soon as he came out. We didn't know again what what we were expecting. So well, good. um at first when I when we're like, okay, I want a boy, and then I was like, why do I want a boy? And like obviously asked myself questions like because I want him to be like me. Why do I want him to be like me? Like because I'm insecure. He doesn't have to be like me. He needs. To... So then I was like, okay, a girl would be cool. And then I was like, so why do I want a girl? Just because it's not a boy. So then I was like. Okay, whatever comes, I'm going to love unconditionally. So yeah. that was some growth on me. And then just craziness of trying to run a business and have a relationship and support her. And like, I'm going to hold my hands up like I was not perfect. Like, because I always just defaulted to the safety of me. Like, okay, I've got to work. I've got to sleep. So I took the sofa because I had to get up early for work, like half past four. I decided like for energy, I wanted to keep up my workouts. They weren't the same. I woke up at half four, done a little feed went to the gym before my clients and then I would train at like five o'clock and first client would be seven just because I know the the value of health and I know a lot of dads put on the dad stone or they have the dad bod but that doesn't serve them because right. they end up feeling worse they blame it in fatherhood which is it's not wrong or right or anything it's just what it is it's just what your personal standards are and I think some people might go the extreme and like can't give up anything but as a father you have to compromise in all areas you know so eventually I started to be a bit more empathetic towards obviously my partner's needs like she was knackered and breastfeeding and not sleeping and stuff like that so just support as much as I could outside of the financial aspect you know and mm -hmm. I think like a good wife is like they just they do it automatically a good mother yeah like it's unreal like when you see that that bond and that like they just I just follow her lead basically you yeah. know because I'm not saying my dad was a bad dad, but like there was certain things that I would have liked. And my partner's dad, like I would say he's an unconditional love man. He grew up in Ireland and stuff and he's got five kids and super calm, but just loving and just accepting no matter what. And it's like, I think as men, you just need to find going back to like the social media thing. Like who do you listen to? How do you do it? Like just find people that sound like you like what they're saying and give them a try. Mm -hmm. And just listen to what they're saying. And then, then like, if you grow you grow apart and you, ch you change your direction in life, then you don't have to follow them. Like, there's no, nobody cares if you unfollow them. And if they do, then they're probably not the person that you need to be following, yeah. you know? Yeah, fill up your, fill so, up your life with people who speak to you and encourage you and motivate you, right? That's because there's so much of the opposite that happens on social media where you can fill your mind with things that, tear you down or make you feel like you're not good enough or you'll never make it or you'll never be like me with my fancy car or my 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 fancy yeah. life yeah. you know that's really kind of demotivating you need to surround yourself yeah. with people like that bring you up yeah 
that's like that's why you just even with the dad space is just try to find people that are I mean like, like you don't want people that are just always going to talk about what's wrong and how, how they're struggling you want people with solutions yeah. so that's why I went in the coaching space because it's like okay understand what's wrong and here's a way to fix it but at the same time you're not broken okay understand your issues here might be something that you can use to help because like are we ever truly fixed maybe not people were like I think your 20s, you're just an idiot. In your 30s, you're starting to learn about yourself. In your 40s, you really start to get the grips with it. And in your 50s, you start to give back more because you've the pendulum of life has swung both extremes for so yeah. long and now the swing is less. And you can see kind of what's in the middle now and you can, you've can you got your version of how you want to help other people, you know? Yeah. So I think that's like super important to have that awareness to help. I mean, just to help others. Like ultimately, the more I evolve as a man is like, I still want to look after myself because I can't help others if I'm sleep deprived, if I'm not healthy, I'm not eating right, I'm not looking after my mind, if I don't have purpose, I don't understand my values and have routines. You don't want to be a slave to routines, but you need to have things that, that you know work for you most of the time. And if your kid gets in the way, then you also need to have plans for that as well. And right. sometimes you just don't need to have plans. You just need to say, F it, yeah. raise your hands yeah. <laughs> and be like, ah. Oh, Kids, kids, life, right. you know. So let's talk a little bit about your coaching program and what you do to help men um, specifically. And uh, to add, if we can even go to that level, somebody signs up to work with you in their first meetings with you. Kind of can you walk us through how you onboard a new client and what you kind of, how you kind of get people started in a relationship working with you? Well, firstly, I just like want to understand like if I'm the right person for them. I'm having a conversation with, with someone just now and he's like, he really needs help. Like this man, uh, he didn't have a good relationship with his dad. He works 21 hours a day on one of our sales calls. He's telling me, showing me like all this money stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy's in so much pain. But um, there's a lot of ego there and stuff like that. And it's like, this guy's in pain, but like, am I the right guy to help him? Mm. Because the conversation, he's like, look, I need you to be available all the time. And I'm like, no, like there has to be some personal responsibility. So the person has to be ready. And when the student is ready, the teacher appears. So firstly, I'm just having conversations to understand your situation, just to make sure like if I feel I'm far enough on your path that I've walked it and I've lived that life and I've helped other people through your struggles, then okay, we can have that chat. So we have that chat and then I figure out your problems. Is it weight loss? Is it managing your schedule with kids, being a dad? businessman or whatever your job is like there's there's no i don't discriminate in anything but i just have to understand your situation is there room for improvement there always is it's not a lack of time it's a lack of priorities so mm. is it a priority for them right now and if it's not it's fine you can still make like little changes and things like that but seneca the greek philosopher says consciousness of wrongdoing is the first step to salvation so Sometimes our conversations, even if we don't work with people, like those people have went on to like make a change because they just didn't know that they were in a bad place. Potentially, it's just a natural conversation evolved to a phone call. And then the phone call just turned into a deeper conversation that helped them understand themselves. So anyway, let's just say they need help. A lot of them will have some weight to lose because life's just got ahead of them. They've had one kid, a lot of the time, a couple of kids. They used to be fit, but then they're sitting down at a desk 10, 12 hours a day. Right. They're in pain, sleeping yeah. less. If you sleep less, your testosterone levels drop. So like your male hormone drops, which makes you put on body fat. That can be a survival mechanism, but you do that for too long. And you're 20, sometimes 40 pounds overweight. And that's just like, you can't think yourself positive. At some point, you have to act yourself positive. So mm. um, we've assessed your life. We make tiny changes. Like when people are motivated, it's dangerous. And they start fast and then they fizzle out and they finish slow. So like I try and reverse it and start as slow as possible. And we pull, I just like to use in that, like a low bandwidth lever. So something that you can do that's not going to stress you out because most of these guys, their stress levels are sleep deprived. They're busy with work. They're potentially worrying. They might have enough money, but they're worrying about financial markets, their business, their house, potentially second home, some of these guys. So 
they're at capacity. So we need to, we can't go, okay, you're going to work out five times a week. Why would that might be a perfect plan for fat loss? When your body's stressed, it doesn't want to give up fat. It just wants to survive. It doesn't even digest foods and you end up with these ailments, yeah. kidneys, I don't know, eye pain. And sometimes it, you can try and find a source of the kidney or eye pain or whatever the specific example is. But a lot of the time they're just doing too much. They're asking too much of the body. So we slow them down and we make pull that low bandwidth lever. So sometimes it's just, are you having breakfast? Yeah, what is it? I don't know, a yogurt or some high sugar cereal and a triple shot coffee with some milk and maybe some sugar frappuccino or something like that. Yeah. These people know that that's probably not the best thing for them. So we just make them aware, like, how can we make that better? Like we focus on better food choices, figure out a version of protein that they can have. It's going to keep them fuller for longer. It's going to support more muscle mass. More muscle mass is going to help the testosterone levels. But for that, they have to exercise. But again, we're not starting off at five days a week. We try and start off at three times, 30 minutes a week. It could be body weight. It could be anything. We just have to get them moving so that they act positive instead of think positive. Because a lot of the time, it's like if you're depressed, which a lot of men can be, and depression's a scale. You could be 10 out of 10 depressed in bed, can't get out of bed. You'd be free at 10 depressed, something's off. You just kind of miss the actions that you need to take. Sometimes it's just, it's a, a chemical imbalance. You're not sleeping. You're eating highly processed foods. You're not exercising, which releases feel-good hormones. Right. You've got higher body fat, which lowers your testosterone, elevates your estrogen. That might lead you to maybe losing, like extreme cases, not taking actions, losing a job, potentially losing a loved one, a partner, because you're not a participating partner in a relationship depression is a normal symptom of all those things but you start sleeping well eating well moving more i mean i'm going to say exercise long term you'd like to have some form of strength training but find sports find something you love go back to what you love as a person Mm -hmm. because while the best plan out there might get you better results you won't enjoy it and like you have to enjoy some part of it so i have to understand like what these people enjoy and then we build a plan around that so it's like Find a way to eat well that doesn't stress you out. Find a way to exercise that doesn't take too much time out of your schedule, that you enjoy partly, at least one workout a week. Um, find a way to move more, walk more, and manage stress. Take two minutes out of the day to start because 15 minutes for somebody who's never stopped for years, that's too much. It's overwhelming. So yeah. we start small. We start small to answer your question, and it has to be specific to them. And there's principles like anything. To invest well, there's principles, don't lose money, pick big companies, stuff like that. Fitness, stick to whole foods, try and stick to protein. There's food lists and things like that. What does that look like? Are you eating at home? Are you eating on the move? Where's your safe restaurants that you can Yeah. It's based more like what I always joke is that you could pay me a lot of money for 12 weeks and I'll just tell you what, I'll make you do what you already know what to do, basically. (laughs) But we'll just find a way of doing it this, that you're going to be happy and comfortable with that after our 12 weeks together, like you don't need me. So I'm at a job technically, but you've evolved as a man and you can handle your physical health with nutrition, with exercise, your fitness, and as well as your emotional health. There's, I know I've just talked about the health aspects there, but we work a lot on mindset because most men are missing that, you know. So, Fabio, are you working mostly with men in your geographical area? Are you working with people around the world? Talk a little bit about that, too. Globally. So, clients America, currently Dubai, Mexico. Wow. uh, London. I think that's it for now. That's the beauty of a coaching business, right? Like, the one-to-one used to be in London. That's where the money was. I chased it. Um, But the fulfillment... I mean, initially, the fulfillment fulfillment was there, but the, the landscape's changed. I'm a father. I want to give a better life to my boy. London, he that's all he's known. My boy's English. Um, my partner's Irish. I'm Scottish. So, um, <laughs> But like, there's no family. We're just down here on our own because that's where sure. the money is. So I'm trying to, I've, I'm in the process. It's been about 18 months and um, just evolving my business online so that I can help more people. I can actually help more people that want to be helped now. You know, I'm not like restricted by people who can visit a gym in central London, right. you know, I can actually speak to the right, but like I said, with the social media, like you just have to be like ready, willing and able. And if you are and you're in a bit of pain 
and you can't quite put your finger on it or you need motivation or accountability or something that works like most 90 percent of my guys get in shape like they follow the plan it works because there's principles that you follow but there's also empathy i understand that like being a dad being a businessman and it's, it's so stressful like and as you say with dad space like and these dads and these pockets of men that need to meet up and speak outside of the superficial stuff like you said with the sport and the cars but i wouldn't all necessarily say that's superficial like you're still going to find troubled men in those places but like for me i've always just been super open i don't know why it's either a personality trait or it's kind of a learned skill but when i open up i speak to other guys and they start to open up you know like i've, I've recently i played basketball gave up 12 years ago and started playing like a year ago again luckily with more kind of physical knowledge so i'm injury free now I had two knee operations when i was younger but i spoke to a guy he's 23 um on the basketball court we just play scrimmage it's nothing serious but he's a young kid but he's very troubled so doing smoking weeds every night um taking coke at weekends addicted to gaming mm. porn yeah. not happy i'm like man like and it, from what he told me it's because his dad like when you put on weight his dad's like that's not good enough like of course you have to be strong as a dad but if that boy is a 23 year old boy like because i know i was like a 23 i was i wasn't a man i was a boy you know and mm -hmm. If you don't have unconditional strength, leadership and support and love from your dad, you're going to look for feeling good. And this guy, like he's extremely overweight. So he he medicates with food because sugar gives you a quick high. Mm -hmm. But the long term is weight gain, which you keep on chasing cheap dopamine because you can't produce it naturally because you're out of whack. So we need to attach an importance. Like, why is it important for you to change? And most dads is like, okay. I want to play with my kids without making noises when I pick them up. I want to be able to run after them. Yeah. I want to look after their grandkids. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because right. it's tired when you're 30, never mind when you're 60. Yeah. That's amazing. So, okay, so the the dads that are listening right now to us talk, I'd love for you to take the mic and kind of speak to them directly what your encouragement would be. Again, you do this on social media and I love it, but I'd love to capture that moment here. And speak directly to the men listening on maybe what they can do this week and what it would look like to be a healthy dad. Because I think we we all have different definitions of what healthy is. And I kind of like for you to kind of clarify that for us. And instead of speaking through me to them, I'd rather you speak directly to them, to them. as a listener. And what would you say to them? I think the dad listening, like you need to firstly just stop and think which is very difficult as a dad. And I get it. Like you're, you're going to struggle to do that when you come home after a long day's work and you have to put on the dad hat, but find carve out some time, speak to your family, try and get some support and just go and sit for, because listen, like if you're going to make a change, the hardest part is making that decision to change and following through. Like after that, the hard work becomes easy. So you have to stop for long enough to understand what you want. And it, that's going to change but you need to spend an hour with no phone and just write some stuff down or just think, go for a walk, but you're going to get distracted. You might not be used to doing it, but just think, what do you want as a man, as a father, but also for yourself? So if it is weight loss, okay, this is what I want. What can you commit to? So initially you're going to come up with these things and you're going to have to integrate them into life. And it's not selfish you doing that because if you've got more energy, you sleep better, you've, you're happier, you're less angry, you don't snap it. The kids you can show up as a better dad and then like you're leading by example so you want to like firstly have that compassion and it's okay to want that stuff for yourself because some guys feel guilty you know like the other half might make them feel guilty they might feel guilty because the kids might not get as much attention but what do you need okay you need to exercise you need to eat well what's that going to look like and it doesn't have to be perfect so like i said is it sport is it meeting up with another dad playing tennis, table tennis, squash, badminton, basketball, football, soccer. doesn't matter. It's just something physical so that you can act yourself like in a bit better position. And once you get fitter and healthier, you can get better, right? That's what I'm saying. You set the goal initially. You start walking a path and you can course correct like a sat nav. With nutrition, you've got kids, you've got a family. You're going to need to eat less processed foods, less junk, eat more whole foods, 
ideally coming from meats, fish, eggs, dairy, yogurts, stuff like that. Some vegetables, carbs aren't bad, but if you're trying to lose fat, you probably a good idea just to reduce them a little bit. But if you're super active and you're exercising a lot, you can have them. So what's that look like for you? Can you eat three times a day? Okay, are you eating at home? Are you eating out? Are you going to work? Is there somewhere around your work that's going to have protein? And start just looking at things. Um, nutrition labels, like all these things, I'm, I'm going to try and give like simple things to take away. But you looking at a nutrition label might be annoying, but you've got to remember why you're doing it. To lose body fat, to be a better dad, so that you have more energy. And like that just becomes the vehicle to get you to where you want to be. But if you've always struggled with nutrition and you just want to be told a meal plan, meal plans don't work because what happens when you're out and about with the kids or something right. else happens, like it just goes down the toilet. So you want to have options and tools. So at home, can you have eggs for breakfast, a yogurt and some fruit, a protein shake, maybe even some meat if you're adventurous. It just it doesn't really matter as long as it's protein. Lunch, is it a salad? Is it like a burrito, a sandwich? And again, understand calories. Like, can you get 30 grams of protein, which is a nice, anything between 20 and 40 grams is good per serving. Look at the label. Has it got 20 to 40 grams? Can you get that from 150 gram protein shake? Sorry, 150 calorie protein shake or a 600 calorie sandwich? Obviously, one is going to serve a purpose. One is going to give you more energy, potentially keep you fuller for longer. But if you're trying to limit calories and you're going to have a big massive dinner that night with the kids, go for the easier option of the protein shake, maybe a bit of fruit. Right. So it has to like, this is why you just need to take that time because it's not just like, I'm going to tell you these rules. Here's what to eat, exactly what to eat and you're good forever. Yeah. Because your situation is going to change. Your kids are going to grow up. Their diet's going to change. They're going to start doing different things. So it's knowing, understanding what you want to do, lose weight, and then your your why, your purpose, and your reason for it. And then the rest becomes easy. Who are you going to meet up with? And then after that is, okay, having conversations with your wife, your partner, your kids. Can you include them? Like, can you play sport right. with your kids? Like, that's a yeah. start for some people. Like, And I used to think, oh, I have to go to the gym. Now I include my boy as much as I can, you know. And it's not the same. But if I work out at home, I've got a big kettlebell, he's got a little one. He's just messing about. It's not a perfect workout for me, but at least I'm getting some activity. And then just once you have those conversations, then things are going to change. Your wife, your partner, she might not like the new you, but like the the fact that you're committing all this time to yourself, but you're doing it for a reason and you include them. You be sensible. You give her her space as well because you both need your own space. Try and get her to meet up with some friends as well. You take the kids. You have to share the load yeah. because that's your, your job as, as a man to lead. So I would, I would, instead of going too far with that, I would say that's what you need to do with. Take the time out. And you've maybe never, ever taken time out to think about what you really want because you're stuck with your phone, you're watching TV. There's just always some form of distraction. But really, even if you've got access to a park or somewhere quiet, or even if you just go for a drive for an hour and just think, and then when you stop, just write it on your phone, something like mm -hmm. that. And that's just going to get the cogs turning. And then what can you do? What can you do that's easy, that's not going to stress you out? And... If you think you can work out maybe at a stretch three times a week, but you can definitely do two, don't beat yourself up and set a goal of three. Like guarantee two for two to three weeks and then earn the right to do three. And if you get a third one, a bonus one, that's cool. But if you've committed to two and you do that for three weeks and you get the occasional third, then that's cool. But if you committed to three and you do the same, you get two two workouts, two weeks and one workout, three, three workouts, one week, then yeah. you're going to beat yourself up. But it's yeah. the minimum threshold, and it's not about being perfect. It's about proving to yourself that you can stick to something. And then as you evolve, your workout plans are going to evolve. As you evolve, your diet plans are going to evolve. As you evolve, your mindset, your conversation skills, you being uncomfortable having those conversations, that's also going to evolve. You're going to be less uncomfortable. You'll be able to be more vulnerable. With your kids as well, you know, like a lot of these guys – they're, they've got so many kind of traumas and insecurities that they end up not showing that to their kids and their kids need that you know it doesn't mean their dad's weak it's like okay this is like i'm choosing to share this information with you i don't feel good in this position but here's how i feel and i'm going to try my best to be better and yeah. a kid's going to appreciate that as long as you give them that same space without judgment you know so I think that's kind of the best place for, for most of the guys to start with is just simplify it. Like social media is noisy. 
like there's free workouts everywhere but just find a way that you can eat less processed food eat more high quality protein and move more if you want to build muscle and lose fat you're going to have to lift some weights eventually but you can start off with press-ups and squats some chin-ups if you're strong enough and clean up your diet and that's it that's the basics right that all this stuff can evolve and i can go into complexities of yeah. stuff that i work with my guys but there's no need for people listening it's just like yeah. and if it's confusing reach out to someone you can reach out to me you can reach out to anyone else like there's um and i forget the other dave that was on your, your podcast but he was a cool guy like to reach out to especially if you're christian right like yeah. you have to find your person that you resonate with so follow someone listen to them then like they'll give you an opportunity if they're good and if they're accepting people to for you to reach out to them a call to action a word to something to message them and if you feel like you're ready and that person might understand you then like you can tell you can read people a lot of the time you can tell somebody's just trying to sell you something but just try and find the authentic ones the people that actually want to help you right and if you get on the phone with them it's not right you don't have to make a decision sometimes that awareness is just all you need it's a process there's a hundred a thousand layers to your own personal onion all you just try to do is get to the next one yeah. each time and just keep on evolving and growing you know i love that um being a healthy example to yourself and to your family and to your kids doesn't have to be another layer of stress that you can add to your already stressful life. Start with the little things. Like you talked about, those little levers, little things are easy to start with. Just start with your breakfast. Would you have a breakfast? That's a great, yeah. easy beginning point. Instead of going from no activity, inactivity, to buying a very expensive piece of equipment put in your home to exercise with and never using Right. Yeah. I'd rather work on the little things and build a healthy lifestyle from the beginning. That's a smart. Yeah. It's like make the smallest possible changes. Like, because some people, if you haven't exercised in years and then you go to working out five times a week, you're going to be broken and you're not going to want to move. <laughs> yeah. and that's going to make you, and then you're going to miss a workout and you go, oh, I missed that workout. I'm a bad person. You're not. You've just worked out five times after not working out for years. Like, you're meant to feel terrible right now. Yeah. And like, part of it is just understanding, like, when you're unhealthy and you're going to go to healthy, it's not going to feel good straight away. It's going to take at least two weeks to start to feel like normal. And that's why if you start slow, the changes are more gradual. And then you can end up like you don't feel like you're detoxing or just feeling terrible. Like you're just slowly just getting a little bit better, you know? Yeah. And if you're a dad out there, a man that's been exercising, you've missed your goals and you've given up. There's you can still get right back to it again. Start start with the easy stuff. Get back over, be back to a routine, and work your way back. Don't don't give up on yourself when you miss a goal. Right. There's there's no secret to this. Like people want it because it's human nature to look for the pill, the fat burning pill, or the like the magic workout. Right. And that's why right. six minute abs, all this stuff. This copy, this full industry is based on human emotion. Right. It's basic. It's simple. Find something that you don't mind doing. Ideally, you enjoy it. And then do that. <laughs> That's it. Because eating healthy, like you might not want to eat healthy, but if you want to look good, then you have to weigh up like the long-term future self version of you eating a salad today versus the current one who wants to eat a donut. You know, right. I love eating donuts, but <laughs> my future self doesn't because then I feel terrible, you know? Yeah. So it's just keeping it simple for, for the guys out there. It's just like, don't put pressure on yourself. Don't compare yourself to other people. It's hard, but look, there's there's enough information out there that you can take what I've said in this podcast and you can get in amazing shape. All you have to do is keep showing up. Don't miss. And if you miss, don't miss twice. So I don't mind people missing because life happens, but learn the lesson, come back. Just don't repeat it a hundred yeah. times. Yeah. And if you are repeating a hundred yeah. times, then you need to really start asking yourself deeper questions. And that's when you probably do need some help yeah. getting some therapy because it's probably a pattern that you you don't know is there from mm -hmm. childhood or even adulthood who knows amazing thank you for making time for us i know we've taken a lot of your time today to be on the show and great feedback great information that we can all use as dads as men again i'd love to put it here at the end where do we connect with you how do we find you and again your social media as well is really important i think people need to to follow along on that as well where do we go from here yeah, I mean, I'm most active probably on Instagram. So it's at Fabio Bonanno, F-A-B-I-O-B-O-N-A-N-N-O. -N 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 and then 
LinkedIn, I kind of share a lot more stuff with that. I find a lot of clients on there. So Fabio Bonanno coach on there. But I think uh, you're getting part of the business, me talking to the men in pain on Instagram as well as a bit more of like the real me with Instagram stories. You can put up something for 24 hours and you'll get some some shots of my, my cute boy. Obviously, I'm biased, but um, you'll get you'll get pictures of him and stuff like that. He's amazing. So, um, yeah, Instagram is probably the best shout initially. Awesome. Thank you so much for making time for us on Dad Space. I really appreciate having you here. And the fact that you actually listened to some episodes, that makes me so happy. I really appreciate that. And, oh, um, it was great. I really enjoyed it. You know, these conversations are... Listen, just because somebody doesn't listen, it doesn't mean, like, it's not a good conversation, right? Right. So... I think like social media is the same thing just because you don't get the likes that you've put your heart and soul into like a really vulnerable post and you get three likes like it doesn't mean that like people aren't reading it like the conversation still means something you just have to be real to yourself you know and you're having these conversations like people are coming on your podcast for a reason you know like otherwise you wouldn't have any guests yeah exactly so yeah so i really appreciate you making time this is awesome everyone please go check out all of the links in the show notes and I would encourage you to follow along on the journey on Instagram. I'm getting so much value just following along with you and all the great things you're posting. Keep going. Don't give up because you got a guy here in Canada that's learning from every post. So thank you for what you do. And again, if you're looking for a great coach who can help you get healthy and get your life back and on track, this I would really suggest you reach out to Fabio and, and let him help you because he he can help so many people so thank you for making time for us yes dave appreciate it this is fun really good thank you very much this is great thanks for listening to dad space today go check us out on all of our social media youtube all that great stuff you can find us as dad space podcast real simple dad space podcast whether you're on facebook instagram tiktok even youtube email us dad space podcast at gmail.com we're always looking for great guests to come on the podcast. If you have any feedback for us, let us know here at Dad Space. Looking forward to connecting with you on the next episode right here of Dad Space. Follow us on your podcast app for more. Cheers. To you, Dad. Thank you.